Good morning. Not sure what time it is when you're watching this, but it's morning for me. Could be doing uh, some trees out in the field. This is, of course, morning light. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this straight off of YouTube, um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, do me a favor and subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. By the way, the colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium yellow light. This is really closer to cadmium lemon, but the manufacturer calls it, calls it cadmium yellow light. Cadmium orange, yellow ochre, uh, transparent red oxide, which is very close to burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean, and viridian. That's cerulean blue hue, by the way. So I'm going to block in a composition, I'm trying to figure out what it is I like, and I'm going to change things a little bit. If you look at the reference photo, you can see that the hill is fairly flat. And I'm going to change it a little bit, and I'm going to rearrange a few things just to make this more interesting. Sometimes I just like to uh, experiment with stuff. come down with this. I really liked the hills showing through the greens. You have the dark greens in the foreground and then you have those distant hills back there. And I like the look of the uh, blue of the hills through the dark green of the trees. I should probably be painting the line for these hills in blue rather than in green. You want to maintain aerial perspective, which means you want to keep the yellows and the earth tones out of your distance. Um, out of your distant hills and sky and things like that. So, so let's grab a little bit of cobalt blue to block in those hills. Painting on a pretty small canvas today. And the reason for that is it's quicker to do. Light changes fast out here. Yeah, it's going like that. That's kind of interesting. Actually, I'm going to raise these hills up more. canvas that I'm painting on is about six by eight, probably six and a half by eight and a half to be completely accurate. And those of, you who, those of you who have watched my videos before, or see my uh, videos from the past, from last year, um, just a uh, full disclosure, I'm gonna be doing things different this year. I'm gonna be showing part of the video to my YouTube subscribers, but I've been hoping that YouTube ad revenue would have been a little more generous, and it wasn't, so I kinda slowed down and stopped doing videos for a while and I thought I'd just completely given up but I had some Patreon supporters not as many as I'd hoped but I thought well I'm gonna show my videos so I'm gonna make continue making videos and to help fund this I'm going to uh, show the entire video just to my Patreon supporters so I'm gonna be showing part of this video to you guys but if you want to see the full video 
Uh, consider clicking on the link below and become a Patreon supporter. It's only five bucks a month. And I have, um, I just started doing this. I know I've had a couple people jump in there and become Patreon supporters and say, hey, there's only a few videos in here. It's like, yeah, that's just because I just started doing this this way. I had to stop making videos for a while because of COVID and all that. Because I got COVID and we just went through a round of sicknesses in our house like never before this past winter. Normally I do like to paint through the winter, but it was exceptionally cold and I just couldn't do it. So, but anyway, so if you want to watch the full thing, um, when this this ends for the public, uh, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You'll see the rest of this video and all the other ones that I will be posting. Now that summer's here, I'm going to be hitting this a lot harder. And I'm still doing my live online classes. They're different from Patreon. Those are for people who want to study directly under me. And those classes have been pretty full, but there is a spot or two that opens here and there. So if you'd like to do that as well, uh, let me know about it. And I, I post um, excerpts from those classes almost every week, and there's a link for that underneath there. I'm not the cheapest out there, but I can guarantee you it's uh, some of the best instruction you're going to get. I've been told that by numerous students, which is why my turnover is very low. Usually the only time people stop is because they have a schedule conflict. Which happens in life. So back to this painting, the big challenge is really one of the big challenges with a scene like this for me is being able to see. The sun is intensely bright and there's not a cloud in the sky, which I absolutely love for plein air painting, but it makes it a little more challenging to um, to be able to perceive colors and things like that. And I should get used to this because I'm heading out west soon to do some painting out there. And it's really like that out there because there's like hardly any atmosphere in the air. The sun is just as clear as can be, which is wonderful, but it can make it a bit challenging to see. So at this time, I'm just trying to make some interesting shapes. I'm not following the scene directly. I'm, I'm changing things around. Because my two objectives out here is to create some interesting shapes and composition and to capture the light. Capturing the light is the biggest thing. But linking these dark shapes together creates an interesting abstract composition. And so what, what you want to do is you want to borrow from what you're seeing out there and develop something that's interesting. If you can, I always say your first priority should be to capture the light. Capture the effect of light don't even worry so much about the drawing. And if you're newer to plein air painting, that's what I would recommend. Now, I didn't do it that way. I was stupid about it, but I was also completely self-taught. I was plein air painting before the magazine came out and before um, the, I even heard the term. Like I was plein air painting in the 80s when nobody but maybe the French and some diehard impressionists knew what plein air painting was or ever heard of it. I was a kid then, but then I stopped for about 10 years and became a musician. That's a whole other story. But I started plein air painting when I, when I started up again in the 
late 90s. When I started up again as an artist. And I was after the drawing. I was, I was sketching from life. And drawing, learning how to draw is never a bad thing. It's just, I had my priorities mixed up and I didn't know what my intentions were. When it, came to draw, when it came to drawing from life with a pencil, yeah, I should definitely focus on getting the shapes correct. But when it came to painting from life, my first priority should have been to get the um, shapes correct or, get, or to get the values in lighting. That time I had no clue what I was doing. And it took me a long time because like I said, I was self-taught. I was just going out there and doing it without any clue. There was a few art books out there, but I'll tell you the one that really changed me was Richard Schmidt's Alla Prima. That one was the one art book that really explained things clearly. And so if anything, I would highly recommend that book. Another one is John F. Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. That one goes a little deeper in the weeds, but it's indispensable for the serious landscape painter. And Edgar Payne's composition of outdoor painting, of course, that's another great one. But anyway, I should have been out there trying to capture the light and I was not. Okay, next let's try to figure out these hills. I may not go that high with those hills. The more I, I think part of the thing I don't like about it is I was cutting this white shape here in half, kind of straight down the middle of it almost. And that's boring when you do that. Let's grab a clean brush. Like we got a tractor going out there now. That's interesting. But it's also one of the reasons why a lot of times I like to paint smaller. I've had people comment and even criticize me for painting smaller. And I make no apologies for it. A lot of the great artists paint smaller outside. Matt Smith, Clyde Aspivig, and all of them. They're not going out there doing murals. Let's neutralize that just a bit. I'm going in with an earth tone on this background. You have to be very careful when you do that, though. This right here is the whole reason I wanted to do this scene. Getting these uh, blues tucked in with these darks. I love that. But painting smaller allows you to get the scene done faster and to capture the light and the values. The drawing, drawing somewhat important, you know, but I'm not going after this complete accurate shape of the tree. I can get that from a photograph. Now, there are foreshortening issues sometimes and things like that. And when that happens, I just grab a sketchbook and do a pencil sketch later. <clears throat> Excuse me, when I'm done when the lighting, you know, when I'm all done capturing the lighting and it doesn't matter so much. Yeah, because when you're doing just an outline sketch of what the shapes are, you don't have to worry about the lighting in that you just have to get the outline so at that point if i expect a foreshortening issue which you're definitely going to get when you're painting big mountains and things like that yeah i'm going to um i'm probably not going to rely just on the photo in that case but when you paint small it's a lot easier to capture the light and capture it quickly. And that's what I want when I go back to the studio. Okay, let's get in some of the ground. Normally I have chromium green oxide out with me, but I forgot it at home. No big deal. Now, of course, with aerial perspective, you want your strongest 
um, colors and yellows especially to be in the foreground. So we're going to mix, mix in some of the ochre and some cad yellow light, but I'm adding quite a bit of white in there because it's still not a super strong yellow. And you want to hold your reserve. You don't want to go super strong right away with your strongest color. Biggest mistake that you can do is see a color and just go full strength on it right away. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's called for, but you have to know what you're doing. A lot of times you want to put in an average and just maybe go down a little bit in intensity from where you think you need to be and then have that reserve to go intense later if need to. Scott Christensen taught me that. Um, something's very important. So if um, you'd like to watch the rest of this video, um, just go down, click on uh, become a Patreon supporter, five bucks a month, you can watch me finish this, and you can watch um, my other videos that I currently have there, and future videos that I will be putting there. And I'm going to be migrating some of my um, current public uh, YouTube videos to Patreon support only, um, just to help support my channel and everything. YouTube revenue does not do it. But anyway, uh, if you like this video anyway, give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I will be doing more. And thank you very much for watching.